The Sumerians are the world's first documented civilization dating back 6,000 years. But is there evidence pointing to a civilization thousands of years earlier? Let's link the clues lost to history and follow the evidence where it takes us. Egypt and Cambodia, 8,000 kilometers apart, but plenty of evidence to suggest a lost link. In Egypt, the three pyramids of Giza were built around 4,500 years ago and are associated with Khufu, Khafre, and Menkore. The Great Sphinx was built at least 7,000 years ago, as proven by Dr. Robert Schock due to the weathering on the Sphinx enclosure walls caused by prolonged and extensive rainfall. However, the original architect is unknown. In Ankar Wat, the 72 temple complex was built by Jayavarman II in AD 802 and ended abruptly with the death of Jayavarman VII in 1218. So, how are the two sites connected? The first connection we can make is through Horus. So the myth of Horus can be applied to Egypt and Cambodia. In ancient Egypt, Osiris was a king and his brother Set desired his throne. Set murdered Osiris to become the new king and cut his body up into little pieces and hid his penis. Osiris' wife used magic to impregnate herself and gave birth to Horus, who then went on to defeat his uncle Set and restore order to the land. The pyramids are next to Heliopolis, one of the largest religious and scientific centers of ancient Egypt. And this is where the ruling sages followed the astronomical road of Horus. At Heliopolis, the followers of Horus kept the knowledge of the ancient Egyptian astronomical religion alive for thousands of years. Heliopolis was headed by a high priest who was known as Chief of the Observers. His main responsibility was to observe the night sky and the motion of the stars. In Cambodia, Angkor in Egyptian means where God Horus lives. The word combination An Hor may also be translated as May God Horus live, Horus lives, or life be in Horus. And inscriptions concerning the reign of Jayavarman II speak of the existence of a group of wise men or astronomer priests. This is the same as in Egypt. And another connection is relating to the stars. In ancient Egypt, it was believed that once a pharaoh died, he would ascend to the skies. In Cambodia, it was also believed that when a god king of Ankar died, his soul went to the skies. So here we have our first connection. Horus appears to be associated with both Giza and Ankar Wat in ancient texts written by priests or wise men. Procession, the next connection, and this is a huge connection. If you've seen my video on procession, you will know how long it takes the sun to move through the 12 zodiacs, and there are specific numbers associated with procession, with 72 years representing one degree of movement. Some of the numbers are 36, 54, 144, 216, and so on. The numbers are very specific. So let's look at the numbers of procession, how it connects the two locations and how they are ingrained into the sites. The Giza necropolis is located at longitude east 31.15 degrees and the Angkor Wat complex is situated at longitude east 103.5 degrees. So the distance from Giza and the site of Angkor Wat is 72 degrees of longitude. 103 minus 31 equals 72. 72 is the amount of years for one degree of procession. And also, in the Ankar Wat Temple Complex, there are exactly 72 monuments. There are other connections around the world indicating the existence of an ancient world grid using the numbers of procession as a marker. If we apply this ancient world grid to center on Egypt, there are numerous ancient monuments worldwide that can be connected using the numbers of procession. But that's for another video, as the evidence is quite extensive. So using the numbers of procession, you can see there's a connection between the two locations, and also they are connected to a specific moment in time as the astronomical evidence will show. So let's look at the sky ground layout. The stars are not fixed in the sky. Their position changes over time and using a program called Sky Globe 3.6, you can move the stars back in time where they used to be positioned. If you were a civilization that wanted to point to a specific moment in time, you could construct your monument and point it to the stars. This is exactly what we have done recently in America. The architects of the Hoover Dam use the night sky to point to its date of construction, so anyone in the future can use the stars to know when it was built. 
The layout of the monuments at Egypt and Cambodia are connected and both point to the exact same moment in time in the past. If you look east now, an hour before the sun will rise on the spring equinox, you will see the constellation of Pisces. Pisces has housed the spring equinox for 2,160 years and we're moving into the age of Aquarius. As Robert Bavell showed in his Orion Correlation Theory, the pyramids mirror Orion's belt and the Sphinx represents a lion. When we look at the sky now, or even 2,000 years ago, there is no connection between monuments and stars, as Orion's belt is at its highest point in its transit, and also now the Sphinx is staring at Pisces. However, when the star map of 10,500 BC is transposed to the ground, it is obvious there is a connection. The Sphinx is staring directly east, watching the constellation of Leo rise on the spring equinox, with the sun following behind it. And Orion's belt is at its lowest point in its transit, exactly mirroring the pyramids, with the Nile on the left hand side representing the Milky Way. 8,000 kilometers away, or 72 degrees away, the 72 temples of Angkor Wat point to the exact same moment in time. If you look at this image of the temples, you can see that they exactly mirror the stars of Draco and other nearby constellations at the sunrise on the spring equinox, 10,500 BC. Furthermore, if you look amongst the temples mirroring the Draco constellation, in the centre is the breathtaking edifice known as the Bion, which is regarded as Jayavarman VII's finest architectural achievement. So, is it an accident that within the overall celestial plan of the temples, that the heart of the Bayon is correlated to the location of the ecliptic North Pole at exactly the centre of the Draco constellation at precisely 10,500 BC? None of this can be a coincidence. Also, the Steppe Pyramid of Bayon is surmounted by 54 massive stone towers, each carved with four faces facing north, south, east, west, making a total of 216 faces. Again, numbers of procession are built into the monuments. The numbers of procession appear all over Angkor Wat temples. They're in the bridges, they're in the faces, they're in the towers, they're everywhere. This cannot be a coincidence. Am I completely mad or is there a connection here? The numbers of procession are connecting the monuments together to a specific moment in time and the numbers of procession are all over the temples of Cambodia and also they're in the pyramids but that's for another video, all these numbers of procession. I think the numbers of procession are sending me mad. What do you think, am I mad? Yes. Thanks. So I find this topic of ancient history extremely interesting and there might not be not anything there, there could be something there, I don't know, it's for you to make your mind up. Like my video, subscribe, because in the future I'm going to be making loads more of these, because these mysteries are all over the world. And I just need to, to give some references, because I've used images from Google, I've read stuff from Graham Hancock's books and used this in my video. I just want to give some references, I've used images from Google and some quotations from Graham Hancock's Heaven's Mirror book. This is my book recommendation for this video. It's Bill Bryson at home, great writer. And in this book, he goes into a lot of the history of the world and where everything came from. And an interesting fact I learned from this book is in South America, they cultivated corn and nobody has any clue how they did it. So definitely read this. You will learn a lot, quite hefty, but definitely worth the read. See ya.